Hello again and welcome to another Show Me tutorial. In this one we're going to be talking about the inguinal canal and its relationships to the abdominal wall. And there's going to be a couple of tutorials actually covering some of this stuff. I think it would probably take more than one. Now to get started we can actually do something which I did in the practicals which is to list all the tissues we have to go through if we were to pierce skin and want to get through to the abdominal cavity. So let's start with that and then we'll build from that onto understanding the inguinal canal. So first of all, we would have to go through skin. Secondly, we'd have to go through some fascia known as campers fascia. Number three, we'd have to go through more fascia, this time known as scarpers. There should be a P. Fascia, that's better. And this one, the campus fascia, the outermost layer, this is fatty. And this one is membranous in nature. Now usually fascia isn't named, there's lots of fascia in the body that doesn't have a name, but where it's particularly well developed it does sometimes have a name and in the abdominal wall it is named. We would now get down to muscle and we're going to try and take an approach of the lateral um, abdominal wall because we want to um, think about the relationship with rectus abdominis, a muscle that you've probably heard of before. We're going to think about the relationship of that um, once we've uh, listed the more laterally placed muscles. So first of all we have to go through external oblique. Remember that one's like hands in pockets so all the fibres are directed from a superior lateral position into a kind of um, inferior medial position. Number five would be internal oblique. The next layer down would be the transversus abdominis. So I'm going to put trans A to save me writing all that out. And those three kind of have a relationship with the rectus abdominis muscle. Because their aponeurosis either goes anterior or posterior to the rectus abdominis muscle which forms really the rectus sheath and strengthens the abdominal wall anteriorly. So once we get down to seven we're actually going through more fascia this is called transversalis fascia this time and eight would be another layer of fascia this time called extra peritoneal fascia and then finally we've made it down to the parietal peritoneum. So they're the layers we'd need to go through and do remember that relationship there with rectus abdominis and the other abdominal muscles, external oblique, internal oblique and uh, transverse alis, um, sorry, transversus abdominis I should say. So. What is the relationship between these particular muscles and how the inguinal canal is formed? Well, in order for that to happen, we need to move on to another um, slide. So we're just quickly going to abbreviate these in the corner for quick reference. Remember we had campus, campus fascia. We had, actually what I should do is put in skin, shouldn't I? skin, campus fascia, scarpus fascia, external oblique, internal oblique, transversus abdominis, transversalis fascia, external peritoneal fascia and parietal peritoneum. So they are those structures that we listed as being part of the abdominal wall. So now what we're going to do is we're going to draw on the inguinal ligament. So the inguinal ligament, so if we were to draw it on, we could go like this. And we could say that up here we have the ASIS, which of course stands for anterior superior iliac spine. 
and the attachment of the inguinal ligament would be down at the pubic tubercle down here. Okay, so the inguinal canal is roughly a four centimeter tube, four centimeter long tube, which basically would start somewhere in the middle. So roughly in the middle, we can draw a tube with an opening like this. It's about four centimeters long, but obviously I'm not doing it to scale for the benefit of uh, understanding and being able to see this clearly. We uh, draw it slightly bigger. So this is four centimeters tube like that, that starts in the middle of the inguinal ligament. So the inguinal canal is a kind of slit-like passage that extends in a kind of downward and medial position and sits parallel to the lower half of the inguinal ligament. And it begins at a structure known as the deep inguinal ring. So I'm just going to abbreviate that as DIR. And the deep inguinal ring is where structures passing through the canal to reach the groin area and through to the um, scrotum in the, in, in the male. And uh, obviously there would be remnants of the round ligament and associated nerves in the female would pass through the deep inguinal ring and exit out of the superficial inguinal ring. So just to clarify, in women, the contents of the canal would be the remnants of the gubernaculum, which would be the round ligament. We'd also have in there the genital branch of the genital femoral nerve, and also passing through there, although not through the deep inguinal ring, but through the musculature, we'd have the ilioinguinal nerve. In males, we would have the spermatic cord, which would contain the genital branch of the genital femoral nerve, and we would have the inguin ilioinguinal nerve and of course we would have a contribution um, of structures of the abdominal wall that would contribute to the um, coverings of the spermatic cord. Let's now however talk about the contribution of the abdominal wall musculature that we've labelled over here to the left and the contribution to the various walls of the four centimeter tube that constitutes the inguinal canal. So first of all, we're gonna deal with the anterior wall. Okay, so anterior. Now the anterior wall of the inguinal canal is formed along its entire length by the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle. But it's also reinforced laterally by parts of the fibers belonging to the internal oblique muscle and the internal oblique originates from the lateral two-thirds of the inguinal ligament that, that enables it to um, supply part of the anterior wall. So let's just label that as external oblique and, and that's the aponeurosis. If I can get this to work, aponeurosis and the internal oblique supports it lateral two-thirds. So that's our anterior. The next wall um, is going to be our posterior wall. And the posterior wall of the inguinal canal is formed along its entire length by the transversalis fascia. So transversalis fascia here. The next part of the wall is called the roof, so that's the superior covering. Now the roof, or the superior wall, of the inguinal canal is formed by those arching fibres of the transversus abdominis and the internal oblique muscles, and they would form the conjoined tendon um, down towards the pubic tubercle. So now let's just abbreviate that by putting on our transversus abdominis muscle here, so those arching fibres, and of course, the internal oblique muscle. The next layer is the floor. 
Now, the floor of the inguinal canal, which really is the inferior wall if you like, is formed by in part the inguinal ligament and this is rolled under the free margin of the lowest part of the aponeurosis of the external oblique which forms that kind of gutter or trough which we, uh, we talked about in some of the practicals. So the floor is going to be the inguinal ligament itself and of course part of the aponeurosis of external oblique. Okay. So that is our basic anatomy of the abdominal wall and its contribution to the different parts, the anterior, posterior, roof and floor of the inguinal canal. Okay, we'll pick up where we left off here in the next one by talking about some other development of the inguinal canal and also thinking about hernias as well.